The Razorback basketball team welcomes in another top 25 team to Bud Walton Arena this weekend. This time, it's the Tennessee Volunteers, and we're going to be joined by Eric Kane of the Locked On Vols podcast to talk more about it. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Arkansas, Tennessee coming up tomorrow in Bud Walton Arena. The Volunteers coming off of a huge win over Kentucky. Arkansas has won 10 of their last 11 games, and they're looking to keep it going against the Volunteers. And we're going to talk more about this game as we go ahead and welcome in Eric Kane of the Locked On Vols podcast. And Eric, appreciate you joining us this afternoon, man. How you doing? Yeah, doing well. Appreciate uh, you having me on. Yeah, and I will just start with with Tennessee uh, and the, the season that they've had so far where it seems like there's pretty much just four teams now in the SEC, at least at the top. You got Auburn, of course who is uh, arguably one of the best teams in the country, but they're atop the SEC. Kentucky's really good, too. Tennessee and Arkansas. So you kind of get uh, a little bit of a feel of how what the good teams are in this conference. But with Tennessee specifically, just the overall season so far, is this about what volunteer fans expected out of the team? Are they surpassing expectations? What's the overall vibe in Knoxville? I, you know, it's just, each season has its highs, its lows, its – uh, kind of it's in betweens. Um, you know, two teams we thought would be role players in the SEC this year, LSU and Alabama, right? And Alabama's kind of you know started to get back to what we kind of thought it would be inside the top twenty-five, winning some games. LSU's been kind of hit or miss, but um, yeah, I think Tennessee. This is kind of about where you know fans thought that it would be a top twenty-five team all season long. Um, there was some worry there uh, at the beginning of the season. You, you lost uh, at Alabama. You didn't look good at LSU. Um, you got embarrassed uh, at Kentucky, right? But since that near 30-point loss in Lexington, uh, Tennessee's won every single game except for a showdown at Texas uh, for the Big 12 SEC Challenge where Tennessee uh, erased a, a big deficit, went on a 15-1 to run and lost by one point, right? Uh, it's got an eight-game win streak inside the SEC. Um, and, and Tuesday night was a whole lot of fun, uh, you know, both ends of the court. Uh, you know, shutting down Oscar Sheepway, you know, Tennessee led by 20 at one point in that game against arguably a team that could win the national championship. So it's about where, you know, we kind of thought it would be, but certainly, you know, how fans are. Uh, it's the end of the world during a two game losing streak and, you know, final four team right now for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like what for Tennessee, at least they, they're a team that sometimes I think people kind of forget about in the SEC because they get, they're so obsessed with Auburn. And of course, Kentucky's always there too. But it's like Tennessee has been pretty consistent. And you mentioned the the winning streak in the SEC and how everything changed since that big loss at Kentucky. What has been the difference? Like what has made this team go on this tear to where uh, not only are they playing as good as any team in the SEC, but maybe one of the better teams in the country? Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, a couple games after that loss to Kentucky, uh, you had Olivier Comwa, who's your your starting power forward. He'd started every single game this year and was really starting to come into his own. He was you know ranking anywhere from third to fourth in terms of the offensive numbers on the team, but he was your best rim protector. Um, Tennessee lost him for the year a couple games after that Kentucky loss, and um, Tennessee has so many options. So you've seen different lineup combinations, and Tennessee's kind of you know Rick Barnes is pressing the right buttons in terms of you know when when to when to put who out there on the court together and when you know what group of guys to kind of run out there. You'll see this tomorrow. You know, Tennessee, uh, you, they start two big men that play, you know, 13, 14 minutes a game. Those are not starter minutes, right? They, they play a, a good portion of the first couple rotations in each half. But then when it's crunch time, Tennessee goes small ball, man. They play four guards. They play Josiah Jordan James, who's been a great story this year. And he's a big reason why the, the turnaround, um, who, you know, Josiah Jordan James has always played great defense. He's always rebounded well. He's a great defender, but um, on the offensive end, you know, we're finally seeing what he can do offensively in terms of coming in here and being a five-star recruit a couple years ago. He plays the four, and then you know, John Fulkerson being forced back into the starting rotation. Or, or let me let me rephrase that: John Fulkerson was a starter, got benched, and then now in that crunch five that finishes halves off because he's playing some good basketball right now. Uh, that's kind of been the difference. Uh, Tennessee's getting tremendous backcourt play. 
with that four guard lineup, Kennedy Chandler, Santiago Vescovi, Zakai Ziegler. But most of all, and this is a trademark of Rick Barnes teams, they play great defense, suffocating defense, uh, an elite defensive team, top four in the country in terms of efficiency rating. And, and of course, um, that's a big reason why Tennessee's kind of turned some things around. Yeah, I was looking at uh, just the stats, uh, speaking of offensively at least, and it's kind of crazy because obviously Tennessee's averaging about 74 points a game and having a lot of success this year. But you talk about Vescovi leading the team with just under 14 points a game. Then you have Chandler with a little over 13 points a game, and that's the only really two guys that are in double digits on averages. And after that, Jordan James is with 8.8. And you just it's fascinating to me because usually when you talk about top 25 teams, top 15 teams, teams that – uh, are really good in particular conferences and everything. It's usually led by uh, a few guys mm -hmm. and a few guys that are able to score a lot of points at a, a large clip. Like for Arkansas, you know, they have J.D. Note scores 18 points a game. They have three other players that are averaging double digits. But with Tennessee, is it just because of how many players actually play in the rotations that they go along with? Or is that just kind of been what Rick Barnes' teams have been about where – uh, they find other ways to have success on the court rather than worrying about uh, who's going to be their their go-to guy when it comes to offense and creating that offense. Yeah, I, more of the latter. Um, you will not play for Rick Barnes if you don't play defense, point blank. Um, he recruits high-level defensive players. You get here on campus, doesn't matter if you're a, a two-star or a five-star. I mean, there's you know, Jaden Springer, Keon Johnson last year. They were two first-round picks, right? And um, you know, they, they sat down at times because they, you know, weren't playing defense. Remember the years of Admiral Schofield and, and Grant Williams, you know, that they, they were defensive players first that grew into offensive players. And so Tennessee doesn't necessarily have a, have a superstar that can go out and just score whenever uh, scored. Well, Santiago Vescovi was that guy at the beginning of the season. I mean, at the first half of SEC play, I, maybe the first third of SEC play, he was scoring, you know, 17, 18 points a game in SEC play. He's come down to earth a little bit, but it's kind of spreading the wealth a little bit. You get, you're going to get three guys in double figures pretty routinely for Tennessee. Vescovy is usually always there. One night it'll be Kennedy Chandler. One night uh, here in the month of February, it's been Zakai Ziegler, uh, you know, a 5'8 true freshman from Long Island. That's been an, uh, an awesome story. One of your bigs will get involved. At the beginning of SEC play, it was Uros Plavsich here lately. It's been John Fulkerson. So, You've always got Vescovy up there that'll take care of his scoring, and then it's kind of who has the hot hand. Usually it's Kennedy Chandler, and then and then somebody else like Josiah Jordan-James who's come along as well. So um, starts with defense, always starts with defense, and then the offense just kind of finds itself. Tennessee's improved very much offensively this season. It was it was flat-out brutal to watch there uh, you know, <laughs> about a month ago, but it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, and I think that with that game that uh, Tennessee had earlier this week against Kentucky, uh, I, from my perspective, I think most Razorback fans, for instance, were rooting for Tennessee, not only because they hate Kentucky, just like pretty much everybody else does, yeah. but there would be at least maybe a more likelihood where if can Tennessee went all out to beat Kentucky, maybe there's a little bit of a hangover mm -hmm. when going on the road uh, to play a, a good team like Arkansas. Do you see any chance of their – possibly being a hangover after a great performance at home against Kentucky. I mean, they'd be stupid to stupid to be high on themselves right now, in my opinion, right? Um, I mean, because Arkansas, I mean, as you know, I mean, 14 and one, right? The Bob Walton Arena this year. I mean, it's one of, one of the toughest places to play uh, in the country. And by the way, I love these videos that we're getting from, um, is it Hog Mom? Is that it? No, yes. Yeah. Which he's yeah. going at Goodman the entire time. Freaking yep. hilarious. Uh but 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 nonetheless, uh no, nah, I, I don't think so. It shouldn't be. Now, I think it helps that game was on Tuesday. I mean, just another day to, to kind of get your, your legs rested right and, and come in there. But I mean, what Arkansas has done against quad one teams, a couple of wins, what it's done at home, um, how it's it's you know, it's gone on a huge win streak starting SEC play what 0 and three and then rattling off eight straight before that loss to Alabama last weekend. So I don't think Tennessee will be high on themselves. I don't think Tennessee will uh, consider this kind of a, a hangover game. Certainly with the Tuesday matchup at Missouri, it's not like it's going to be a trap game. I think Tennessee knows that it's not good enough to overlook anybody, um, and it's got a chance to do something special here. I mean, you're talking about Tennessee's six games to end the season when Kentucky got a win at Arkansas – at Missouri, back home for Auburn, at Georgia, and then back home for Arkansas again. So Tennessee goes four and two, five and one in this stretch. 
I mean, you got you got some real consideration to maybe move up to that two line, depending on what you do in the SEC tournament. So, uh, to answer your question in a long form, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think everybody respects what Arkansas has been doing this year. We'll talk more about Arkansas and Tennessee with Eric Kane here in just a second. But first, got to tell you about Bet Online. Even though football is over, you still have basketball being in full steam ahead with both pro and college hoops. And from the latest odds and totals and player performance, where the next fire and the new fired head coach, wherever he may actually end up landing. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right down to the Olympic coverage and all the information you need. Just head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're continuing our discussion with Eric Kane of the Locked On Vols podcast. Now, Eric, we were talking a little bit about Arkansas in the uh, previous segment and, you know, really just looking at it from, you know, from what Tennessee fans have seen. It's like, you know, Arkansas and Tennessee, they faced each other many times, and especially with since Eric Musselman's been at Arkansas and, of course, with Rick Barnes been at Tennessee for a while now, it seems like these games have always been some really good battles because I'm not saying that they're exactly similar in the coaching philosophies, but the emphasis on defense, uh, the rebounding. I see that Tennessee is one of the teams that lead the SEC in steals where Arkansas is right there too. It seems like there's a lot of similarities to how these teams play and a lot of the philosophies that they have. And I think that's what makes these games always so interesting where it literally could go any way just because of how these teams are so similar. Yeah, it's um, it's certainly not going to be Texas Tech and Texas this weekend, right? Um, yeah. In terms of a rock fight or Tennessee and Texas Tech earlier this year, which was just brutal to watch. But, you know, it's it's kind of kind of a joke amongst Tennessee fans is um, – it's like, you know, they, they don't even practice offense. And it, obviously, of course, they they take up shots. They go over their offensive sets all the time. I mean, you're you're playing, you know, basketball in the Southeastern Conference. But there's such an emphasis in Tennessee basketball with Rick Barnes. Again, defense, 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 rebounding, versatility, um, perimeter, perimeter defense, you know, all that type of stuff. And then, it, it, you know, his comments are always like, you play defense, the offense will come. The offense will come. You have a shot, take a shot. Take the open shot, take the look. And eventually they'll fall. And for so long this year, it was just so bad to watch this team go and try to play offense. Um, but now those shots are starting to fall. You know, since the since the calendars flipped to February, you know, Kennedy Chandler, who will likely be a first round pick, you know, this summer, uh, true freshman has, has really played inspired basketball. His backups, a guy Ziegler again, has played just as good, if not better. Um, you know, Santiago Vespich has continued to be steady, Eddie. So the offense has come. But, you know, when you have two teams like this, it puts such an emphasis on defense and just the little things. Um, it can often be just a different type of style of basketball. And plus, it'll be intriguing games. I know last year, I don't remember much about that game from last year, but I know uh, John Fulkerson kind of did a little bit of everything and Tennessee kind of was able to squeak out with a win there. But it was close and competitive, and I'm expecting nothing less uh, come uh, come tomorrow. Yeah, I think I, I remember that game and just how I wanted to – mute the TV because the amount of times that Jimmy Dykes would say Folky, it, it, it just <laughs> infuriated me. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if you're that cool with a man to call him Folky, but uh, that's like the one thing I'll always remember about that game. And just about like, anytime I see Fulkerson, the thing is he's a good player, but I just don't like him just because of what Jimmy Dykes would always refer to him as Folky. Well, man. little, uh, who, who's got the call tomorrow? Is, is it, is it Dykes? Is it Tom Hart? If it's Dykes, I'm, I'm done. I, I well, just can't deal with that, but it might ready. be. Because as I mentioned, it's like Kai Ziegler, um, the legend, um, the five foot eight from Long Island, New York, the streets of New York. They're going to mention that at least four or five times. So that will be your new thing to hate about Tennessee. <laughs> well, good. I can't wait. Well, <laughs> luckily I'll be at the game. So may, at least I won't have to watch it live. But if I yeah. re go back and rewatch it, I'll just have to make sure it's on mute too, which, you know, kind of made me wonder. I know that uh, obviously you've, you've been, you know, watching Tennessee a lot in all sports and everything. Uh, is there like one particular Arkansas Tennessee game that that stands out to you, or one that you like remember that for whatever reason, for whatever random reason it may be? Man, I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Um, 
I remember obviously the football game from 2020. I mean, Tennessee was just a just a complete dumpster fire in 2023 and seven. Of course, fired your head coach, fired your athletic director, and then here we are with Josh Heupel, and things are looking good, right? Um, mm-hmm. I just remember Tennessee being like it was against Arkansas, like it was against Auburn that year. Tennessee just being the better football team. Now this is football, I'm not talking basketball. Being right. the better football team and and just finding just finding a way to lose at the very end of the game. I remember that. Um, I remember way back when, gosh, this might be like 07, 08. No, it might have been 20. I don't know. It was way back when some Arkansas player had just an incredible punt return where he broke like 13 yeah. tackles against Tennessee that showed up on every highlight tape in the world. Um, I remember those I, I remember those moments, of course. Gosh, I mean, who doesn't remember, you know, McFadden, you know, when when he played uh, at Arkansas? That was uh just just incredible. Um Ultimately, the Tennessee Arkansas showdowns. I've got a very short term memory, so I don't remember much about those. Yeah, well, see, and that's the thing is like with basketball. You mean you know I mentioned football ones, and I, I yeah, those of course stand out. Of course, all no. Tennessee fans are going to know about that 1998 game in Knoxville, mm-hmm, which of course, the, the, uh, just I don't even. It still kills me inside. Stumble but, fumble. <laughs> yeah, man. It, yeah, the turnover, however you want to call it, had all yeah. the different names, but. But yeah, like I felt like in football they always had things, but in basketball even like I remember one of the games that at least stood out to me is uh, I think it was when Bruce Pearl was still at Tennessee, and they were number four in the country, and Arkansas went on the road and had no business winning at Tennessee, but they did, mm-hmm. and I want to say that was the same year that Bruce Pearl because the furthest he took Tennessee was at the Elite Eight, I yes. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that was the same year uh, that he took him to the Elite Eight, but it's like. I, I remember that game, and I remember when uh, Rick Barnes and Tennessee came into town and Arkansas had, like, Daryl Macon and Jalen Barford. Went to overtime, like one of the best games you'll ever see. So, there, yeah. you know, in basketball, they've always just had, uh, not to say, like, any, like, you know, top 25 games of all time, but it, it just seems like where, you know, Tennessee and Arkansas, even though they've neither of them have really, you know, made it to the Final Four or anything like that, they've always just – They've had down moments too, but for the mm-hmm. most part, they've always been really competitive and again, really similar in where they're at as far as the pecking order and uh, how good of teams they are too. Yeah, I would agree. I like I like Musselman a lot. I think he's a I think he's a solid coach. I, I liked uh, a couple of weeks ago, obviously when uh, I guess it would have been the Auburn game when he took his shirt off and dancing with everybody on the court. Uh, that was a whole lot of fun. Um, so, I mean, Arkansas is kind of a, a team that you know, Tennessee and Arkansas they don't play each other much, especially in football. Obviously, you know, play a lot more in basketball. So, like, there's no huge rivalry there whatsoever. Um, but I think in terms of basketball, just kind of because I mean, in the SEC, it's always going to be Kentucky first. You're going to think Kentucky, mm-hmm. Kentucky, as long as Bruce Pearl's at Auburn, and uh, you know, the likelihood of going on another type of fo- Final Four run. You know, Auburn's going to be in that conversation. Will Wade at LSU getting a ton of headlines. You know, and, and then you might mention Tennessee and Rick Barnes. Then you might mention an Arkansas. Then you might mention a, a NATO at Alabama who's been so hot and cold. So, yeah, I think they're kind of in that same genre, th- that same category, uh, you know, in the SEC in terms of the pecking order. Might need more respect. Both teams certainly might need uh, – might be owed a, a bit more respect, especially this year. But they're always going to be second or third thoughts to some of those other teams. So I think that's uh, a way these two teams are very similar. Yeah, we'll talk more about Arkansas and Tennessee in just a second with Eric Kane. But first, I got to tell you about Built Bar, and it's that time of the year where maybe a lot of you have been slacking on your New Year's resolutions. Well, don't worry. Built Bar can help you get back right into it, especially when you're trying to eat a little bit healthier. We're all trying to lose some weight or maybe maintain some weight, and that's what Built Bar is going to be great at helping you with because not only is it a protein bar that tastes amazing that's covered in 100% chocolate, but Most Built Bars only have 130 calories as well as 17 grams of protein and so many different flavors to choose from. It's that simple. If you go to the website, built.com and enter promo code LOCK15, you'll get 15% off your next order. Doesn't matter how many you order. Doesn't matter if you just take out the entire store of all the flavors and everything that they have. As long as you use that promo code LOCK15, you're going to get 15% off your next order at built.com. Again, head to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your next order. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right, we're still with Eric Kane of Locked On Vols podcast. Now, Eric, what you were talking about in the previous segment and something that I have always been very hard on, which let's I'll get this out of the way first. I know that Tennessee's permanent West opponent is Alabama, and that's not going to change. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not vying for that to happen. But I've always felt like Arkansas and Tennessee football had some really good games and some really uh, epic moments too. Because we mentioned, you know, obviously '98 the Sternover, but then mm-hmm. the revenge game in '99. I remember Tennessee coming to town when Arkansas first. Uh, opened up their new expansion back in the early 2000s. They lost that game in a close one. College game day, the only time it's ever been to Fayetteville was in 2006 when Tennessee came to town. Uh, You mentioned the Joe Adams pump return, uh, uh, that play. You know, it's just, I have always felt like there has been a lot of rivalry there, if you want to call it that, or at least good matchups with Arkansas and Tennessee in football. But yet they just haven't played each other so much to where it doesn't happen as often. I, and I don't know how Tennessee fans feel about it, but I've always felt like it's just kind of one of those underrated, undervalued, underappreciated matchups and games to where usually when it's happened, they've been really good and really memorable for the most part. Yeah, I would agree. Um, it, it's just kind of funny here because Tennessee for so long just just beat up on Alabama, which is just took them out back you know it was and, and you know for the for the boomer generation it's got to play alabama every single year got to play alabama that's history that's culture you know for our generation it's like what are you doing get bam off the schedule i mean that's a guaranteed loss every year knowing saban will not coach forever we think right um oh but you know i i think i think most of tennessee fans would be would love to get alabama off the schedule but you know because again that's that's literally another guaranteed sec loss every single year uh, but yeah it'd be fun to play arkansas you know it seems like arkansas it seems like auburn um you know more uh i think those would be you know more up there than uh, tennessee plays lsu this year even though lsu is kind of starting over let's get a really good coach and as you guys know lsu is never depleted of talent it's going to be on the road in death valley so that's going to be a, a challenge there so I, I think because of the some of the matchups and you know, uh, in, in recent memory, and obviously you know, going back to as you mentioned, 1998, I think it'll be a lot of fun for a lot of a lot of fans on both sides for sure. But I'll tell you what, a little rivalry that's probably starting now with this rejuvenated program at the season openers today here is the Diamond Ball, Tennessee baseball. Oh, Dave Van Horn with some with some comments yesterday, and we all knew who he was talking about with Tony Vitello. I think that's something to pay attention to for sure on uh, on the Diamond because those teams do play each other a lot more than the football squads do. Yeah, well, because I know which video you're referring to. And the thing is, is that the specific team he was referring to was Alabama from last year, because that was the only team that Arkansas played where, because he was saying that they won game one and then they chirped and then they went on to win both games. Like that was against Alabama in the early part of the year, because the the Tennessee series last year, we know went one, one, and then Arkansas won the rubber match. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think because of the ending of that series last year, man, like, because here's the thing, like Dave Van Horn and Arkansas baseball, they've been around a long time. Like they've been really good. And oh, I know yeah. Dave Van Horn and everything. And I know that Tennessee with Tony Patello is really coming on strong here uh, as of late and, and really doing a good job there too. But it's like, we don't see Dave Van Horn do that type of stuff very often. Like he'll do that to the umpires or get mad. But when, when everyone saw that against Patello, everyone was like, wait, what, what could have possibly happened to set Dave Van Horn off that way? especially two guys that coached together at Arkansas and like knew yeah. each other. And so that's what made it so crazy. And because of, because of that moment alone, Razorback fans automatically just hate Tennessee. Even if like <laughs> Dave Van Horn was in the wrong, even if he was in the wrong completely, it doesn't matter because you went after their guy. So now I wish Arkansas and Tennessee were playing each other this year in a series. Oh. Like that would have been so great, but uh, maybe in the SEC tournament, but man, yeah, mm-hmm. that was I think that definitely sparked something to where Arkansas, they they hate Ole Miss baseball, which everybody does because they're a bunch of clowns with TikTok videos. <laughs> um, but like they hate Ole Miss. LSU is kind of there because it's always Arkansas LSU. But Tennessee, I think, has now become uh, one of their biggest public enemies as well. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, that that's your that's your former a boss, right? I mean, they're just going at yeah. it left a home plate. Everybody's just kind of like leaving the stadium. And it's like, well, what's going on here? They can start throwing punches. And it's just, it's so funny too. I mean, you know, Vitello, he, he says he's got the utmost respect for him, learned so much for him. I mean, obviously work for the guy, but um, it's just, I'll be honest with you, listen, I mean, Tennessee baseball has been, I mean, it's, it's certainly a niche sport. Baseball in general is a niche sport, which as you can tell, I love baseball. I'm a baseball guy, but Tennessee baseball, 
it's always been on the back burner because it's, you know, you have the early 2000s, you have the mid 90s where Tennessee baseball was really, really good. But, you know, here lately, it's just been nothing. And so, you know, when Tony Vitello comes in and you can see improvement, 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 then you get last year. I mean, no one knows who Dave Van Horn is here in Knoxville. No one knows who he is, but hey, might, might as well be, uh, you know, might, might as well be Nick Saban. You hate the guy, right? Can't stand him. And, and like you said, everybody immediately hates Arkansas baseball now, too. So, I think that's fun. Um, Obviously, baseball is a hot topic button over here. Went to Omaha last year, won the East, hosted a regional, hosted a super regional. The theatrics and how you walked off with a grand slam against Wright State in the re- to win the regional. Um, It's a lot of fun right now. And so, um, and I think a lot, obviously, it's because of Tony Vitello and what he's brought to Knoxville and um, stuff like that last year kind of made that ride so much sweeter. Yeah. And I think, uh, Razorback fans are hoping that they can avenge from last year where, you know, you're number one pretty much the entire year when every SEC series, win the SEC tournament and don't even make it to Omaha. Like that was a brutal, brutal yeah. ending to the season. So, but that's what makes, I think, baseball in the SEC so great right now is mm-hmm. because, you know, for a while there, it, you know, LSU, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Florida, you know, those were, those were really good teams that were pretty consistent. Um, you know, Georgia had had some run here and there. And, you know, the two Bama schools still aren't great, but they're, I guess, a little better with Auburn and, Al- and Alabama. A&M, we'll see what they can do and develop. But it's like, now that it's almost like you don't, they don't lose, Mississippi State and Ole Miss, of course, Mississippi State winning a championship. Ole Miss still is is more fl- like flair than they are actually good. But still, like, the fact that nobody's getting taken out, it's like Tennessee just coming in. Mm-hmm. It's like, now they just get added to the mix. It's like just continuing to add on to, it, the insanely competitive conference that this is, which we know football it is, basketball it's gotten a lot better, but baseball, I still think top to bottom baseball in the SEC, it, it does, nothing comes close to as far as how competitive it is compared to other conferences in those respective sports. Yeah, yeah, I would agree 100%. I mean, it, it is it is murder's row without a doubt. And just, just going to show you, I mean, Tennessee won the East last year, first time since 97, I believe, or, or maybe, you know, it's somewhere around there. Tennessee's picked to finish fourth in the East this year. I mean, that it's just because of the respect for Vanderbilt, because of the respect yeah. for Florida. Um, you know, uh, there's it, just it, it doesn't matter where you look. There's just there's such competitive and great coaches and great players that you see are going to be playing in Major League Baseball um, here in just a couple of years. Because of course, if you go and play in college, you play three years, you're on the fast track. You don't have to wait wait around an awful lot. Garrett Crochet, former Tennessee Southpaw. I mean, he got drafted in I guess it was June and made an appearance in, in the playoffs in in September. So. Um, I'm interested to see about Tennessee baseball this year for sure. Um, it, it, the Volunteers lost 50% of their offense, uh, lost two starters from from the weekend uh, set up. Um, it's ace uh, coming in, coming back into this year. Blade Tidwell, who throws just straight gas. Um, he's out for indefinitely. We'll have to see exactly if you know when he can get back, if he can get back by SEC play. Uh, one of their top uh, pitchers coming over from Missouri, Seth Halverson. He's out for a while, probably until April. Um, so Tennessee's got to regroup in a big way, but Vitello recruited well, kept a couple guys out of the draft coming to Knoxville. And so I think a lot of people are excited about the the buy-in here uh, for this Tennessee baseball team. But uh, I don't think Tennessee's going to go undefeated on Friday nights this year like it like it did last year because, gosh, that was, that was just such a feat and just great, great teams in the SEC. Yeah, it's definitely fun, and it all starts today as well. Eric Kane of the Locked On Balls Cup podcast. Appreciate you joining us, man. I know we talk basketball, but baseball's here too. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I know during the baseball season we'll be catching up soon. Absolutely. Let's do it again.